President Johnson continued in Kennedy's tradition of pressing for civil rights legislation. He asked for and received a tough voting rights law. In 1965, the Voting Rights Act was passed by Congress with a large majority. It proved to be most of the, one of the most important pieces of civil rights le legislation ever passed. It outlawed literacy tests that, quote, qualified people to register to vote. This graphic organizer shows the effects of TV coverage on the civil rights movement. You can just see that it covered a series of events from 1957 through 1965 that really changed the way people saw treatment of African Americans in our society. In 1964, the 24th Amendment was passed. This amendment banned poll tax as a voting requirement. The graph on the right-hand side of the page shows how African American voter registration changed from 1964 to 1968. You can see in all of those southern states that voter registration among African Americans increased significantly. In some states, such as Alabama, it more than doubled. Also significantly increased in Louisiana and Texas, even Virginia. Urban areas, especially in the Northeast, we saw increasing frustration over continuing discrimination, which turned into anger and violent racial acts. You can see where a lot of these events took place. Most are in the northeast corner of the United States in urban areas. This is where, although there are not laws that segregated African Americans, a lot of the discrimination is an undercurrent that runs through society. This is segregation de facto. Riots convinced Martin Luther King that civil rights movement activity needed to move north, and he focused on Chicago in 1966. This eight-month Chicago campaign was one of King's largest failures. Unfortunately, Chicago's African Americans did not share his civil rights focus. They were concerned about making enough money to survive. King discovered that in some of the northern cities, the people who supported him and criticized racism in the South had no interest in seeing him work to expose racism in the North. Several urban areas experienced violence, including Watts, located just outside of Los Angeles in 1965, and Detroit in 1967. Because of this, President Johnson appointed the Kerner Commission part of the National Advisory Commission on Civil Disorders, to study the causes of urban rioting. The study placed blame on poverty and discrimination. This commission was chaired by Illinois Governor Otto Kerner, Jr. It was created in July of 1967 and investigated the causes of 1967 race riots in the U.S. Its findings were that the riots were the result of this black frustration quote from the results from the finding was, our nation is moving toward two societies, one black, one white, separate and unequal. We also start to see some new voices for African Americans, new, more militant voices. During the mid-1960s, radical African Americans such as Malcolm X and the Black Panthers offered new methods of responding to discrimination. Malcolm X, who was born Malcolm Little, was born in May of 1925 and lived until he was assassinated in 1965. He was a prominent black national leader in the United States, militant. He advocated black pride, economic self-reliance, and he focused on identity politics. He was also the national spokesman for the Nation of Islam. Malcolm X proposed that African Americans needed to abandon their goal of trying to integrate into white society and create an independent community within the U.S. He also advocated violent forms of protest. Black Power was a political slogan that described black nationalism that was used to acquire full ethnic self-determination of black people. 
Huey Newton and Bobby Seale founded the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. This was a nationalist organization, one of the first in the country to militantly struggle for ethnic minority and working class emancipation. Stokely Carmichael, a.k.a. Kwame Ture, was a Trinidadian American, a black advocate and leader of SNCC, and then the Black Panther Party. He later became a black separatist and pan-Africanist. This should remind you of Marcus Garvey from the turn of the century, who advocated his Back to Africa movement. Martin Luther King continued to believe in nonviolent protest, despite these more radical views of others, and he fought for what he thought were injustices until his assassination in 1968. The Poor People's Campaign goal was to pressure the nation to do more to address the needs of the poor, particularly the African American poor. Martin Luther King went to Memphis to support a strike by sanitation workers seeking better wages and working conditions. And there, as he stood on a balcony outside his motel room, he was struck by a bullet. He died at the hospital shortly afterward at age 39. By the end of the 1960s, steps had been made to end segregation, raise incomes and education levels of African Americans, but controversy continued to exist over racial issues. There was the end of legal segregation and the passage of federal laws to protect civil rights. There was also the end of legal barriers to African Americans voting and political participation and there was the creation of affirmative action programs. Combined, these efforts marked the significant improvement of civil rights in the United States. That's it for this video presentation. I look forward to seeing you in class.